This week on Three Sides of the Coin, Megan McCracken and another Mitch Gasm. Woo! Stay tuned. <laughs> Jesus God, God, we, love it's gonna... we love Mitch Gasm. <sighs> no one's going to watch now. <laughs> <laughs> We're all going to watch. Mitch, Mitch has just made a great, honest revelation here. Yeah. I don't wow. remember it. What are you talking about? Huh? All right, so so real quick, Mitch, let me circle back. Let me just introduce the show. Here. Yes. Everybody, you're listening to Three Sides of the Coin. I'm one of the co-hosts, Michael Brandville. That's Tommy Summers, and that's Mitch LaFon. And uh, this could be quite an interesting show today. Last week Should was definitely very interesting. We saw a different side of Mitch that completely caught Tommy and I by surprise. Yeah. Couldn't sh couldn't stop him, couldn't shut him up. It was just rolling like a freight train. And I think the fans are really digging it. But as we were getting ready to start this show, Mitch kind of made an interesting revelation to us. Yes. Well, I was just saying that since I've joined Facebook and started Three Sides, I've become um, really thrown into the KISS world a lot more than I had been for, for a few years. I mean, I've always been a fan, uh, but, uh, you know, 2005, 2006, 2007, you know, I'd listen to KISS maybe once every three months and, you know, check out their news on, on websites, but I wasn't all KISS all the time. But, but, uh, but the point is here, you admitted yeah. you're becoming an obsessive-compulsive KISS fan. No, I'm, I'm saying that it, the perception is that I'm some kind of crazed, obsessive-compulsive fan. But believe it or not, when I'm not on Facebook and I'm not doing three sites, I actually have other things going on in my life. Name one. <laughs> well... <laughs> Well, <laughs> but look, for example, today I wasn't wearing a Kiss shirt. I sort of put this on because we're doing the Kiss podcast. But look, I had a Toronto Blue Jays shirt. I was wearing another gray sweatshirt that I, that I took off and switched out for this. I mean. Okay, okay. Uh, that doesn't matter. What character is on your pajamas? I, no pajamas. Jeans. No, no, no. Don't show. Oh, I thought he was, was going to stand today. up with no pajamas on. I was like, no, please. Uh, no, no, I got jeans. Uh, the pajamas are, are hung up. Oh, you know what? I did promise you one thing last week. You promised a lot of stuff. Oh, you know what? I'm not going to start pulling out pajamas and stuff. I think we already did that anyway. Oh, that's right. Yeah. When we get to the Mitch Shocker part, this is all they're getting. Uh, remember I promised them that? That's yeah. all they're getting. No, but I, Tommy, I mean, correct me if I'm Can we wrong, do the shock but didn't, it, didn't, didn't his admission before we hit the record button sound like he was like, you know... I'm an obsessive compulsive kiss fan. We're on the verge of therapy and you should just let it roll. I think we're on the verge of self therapy here. You know, you've got to admit your faults in order to treat them. And I think That's Mitch true. has just admitted he's like a crazy kiss fan. No, I'm not a crazy kiss fan, but I, I'm, I do say that, um, you he's know, a crazy, my crazy Facebook. kiss fan. No, no, but my Facebook long ago stopped being about me and stopped being all about kiss. And, uh, that th that world really closes in on you quickly, and and uh, you know the other day I, I threw up um, an image of a playlist on iTunes. I, I think I had two days of discussion on it. Uh, you know, with people on Facebook. <laughs> Who would have thought? <laughs> you know, it's just nonstop kiss all the time now. And uh, okay, so then so then from this point forward, should we say something like you can't post any? Kiss related item for seven days. I Could you actually, do it? Well, Could listen, you do it? Could you do it? No, no, yes or no? no yes or no? It's, no, no, it's a no, simple no, question. No, no. Let me let me preface. <laughs> on my Facebook last week, I took down the uh, Kiss pictures on the timeline. I put up Metallica and stuff, and I was determined to not post anything about Kiss. And within three hours, somebody else had posted something. And then I had to respond. Well, I didn't have didn't to respond. Didn't have to. But I, I, See, there you I go. Felt, you didn't have to. 
I felt compelled to respond. And felt that crazy urge in your gut. No, well, it almost felt like I have a fan. I have a duty to respond. <laughs> you have a duty. <laughs> it's it's I'm telling hey, it's you. my fan. I have a duty to I'm the Mitch going, Army. I'm going to go crazy. I must lead the Mitch Army every day. Lead but them where? Almost, we don't know. I don't know, but if I don't respond on the on my own personal Facebook about kids, it's it's as if I, I don't know. It, it's 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 weird. <laughs> yes, it is. And you know what? I just had a vision of what the Mitch Army is like. So you remember an Animal House, the parade scene where the marching band turns, right. goes yeah. down the alley, and just starts marching into a wall. Barely, that's, that, but yeah, that's, that's the what Mitch, I was that's, thinking. That's the Mitch Army following Mitch. <laughs> Well, no, <laughs> no, no. But it's it, it is interesting be, because Who you know be after, a kiss mural. <laughs> somebody first of needs, all, somebody needs to do a version of Rock Soldiers change to be Mitch Army. The Mitch but no, Soldiers. you can't say that because we couldn't play it. No, no, no. We won't play it. But just rewrite the lyrics but and give us the know. words. Yeah. No, but yeah, you know, Mitch around the reunion the tour. <laughs> Around the reunion tour, there were those Usenet groups on the internet, you know, Kiss, Music, Record, whatever. You, you could join, and, you'd, and and there was a lot of chat, and so there was a lot of talk about, oh, I think they're going to have this reunion tour. And there was, there was a moment there where there was like two years of mailing lists where you had to, and it was kind of cool. And then after that, it dissipated. And then after Rock the Nation, it, it seemed that though Kiss had stopped existing in a sense, and they certainly weren't going to make any new albums, and so I didn't have conversations about Kiss every day. I mean, that's not what I do. And now because of this and because of Facebook, it's it's with me 24 hours a day. And I have Tommy, to admit, I quite enjoy the conversations. I, I, I actually, as much as you and I sit here and talk about how Mitch drives us crazy, I feel like we're the cause of it. You've driven me crazy. We've we, 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 we brought this upon ourselves. <clears throat> Yes. You know, since this is a therapy session, I think, you see, I live in a community of 800 people, and until the age of 14, there was no public transport, so when I was home alone, I was home alone. There was, there was nothing. There was forest and, and beavers and raccoons, and uh, there was no outside connection to KISS fans, and I think I have all this bottled up angst of being 10, 11, 12, not being able to talk to anybody about KISS. And now it just comes out all the time. And it's people, and, but and, people and, like it. They appreciate it. It's just we've, so give, we've, we've given them a soapbox here where you can talk to thousands of them every week. I know. But the, every but so you long created a Frankenstein. But you can yeah. limit it, though, Mitch. Because, you know, someone said to me the other day, are you tired of it? And I said, yeah, at times I get tired of it. But you can choose what you talk about. And so, you know, the three of us get together once a week and we do this for, what, 90 minutes, two hours. And then I really don't think about it much the rest of the week other than when I'm checking in on the Facebook page or on YouTube. But that's about it, you know. Well, you see, that's the other thing, uh, you know, with Michael having a baby – I'm trying to get some stuff posted on the, the, the Facebook page, and I keep thinking, you know, I go through like 10 things, and I go, oh, that's interesting, that's not interesting, okay, I'll put up a picture. And, I, and now I'm conniving or, or, or thinking about what would be good fodder for discussion, not just what's a cool picture, like what's going to get people talking. We're getting them in even deeper here. We're not pulling oh, them out, we're pushing you. them down farther. This has become a, 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 a job. And a uh, preoccupation. I'm trying to, to, you know, to keep stuff interesting for it's other kids. A sickness. You're putting the team on your back. I know. You know. I know. Yeah. I know. I, I I need to just go listen to like Honeymoon Suite for for like three weeks, or or maybe Metallica, or why not just get a root canal? Eh, I got good teeth. <laughs> but okay, but a root. Uh, what's wrong with Metallica? Let, we, we, Nothing. We, I said that before you got that word out. We, we could have a whole discussion here on Mitch's therapy, and I think we're having a little bit of breakthrough, but we got to have a, we got to continue on with the show because we got oh, people yeah. who get pissy. Are we when, past, yeah, are we yeah, past we get, the seven minutes? We get people mark? who get pissy when they don't have a show after seven minutes and then they have to stop because they got to leave. Fast forward, guys. No, 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 right no. Not, not even fast forward. Here's, a, here's, here's just a, a comment. These shows are always at least an hour long. So if you hit the play button, you know you're in it for an hour. 
If you have mm-hmm. to leave after seven minutes because you got something to do, why'd you even hit the play button? <laughs> because they can only take you and Tommy in small doses. I understand. <laughs> maybe if, that's maybe if we are right. small doses. You are minutia doses. <laughs> no, no. I'm telling you, if I did a show all by myself, they would watch and they would love. So anyway, people, people, let me hear you. Let me hear you. People no, you over there, let me hear you. The wild animals on YouTube, let me hear you. <laughs> we have a very interesting show for you today. We're gonna you kinda we're gonna do a couple quick comments from Tommy and then we're gonna jump into a special guest. And once again, Mitch learned something brand new from this special guest. He did not know this before. It was a little yeah, bit of a minutia I... moment for Mitch. Do we have a new feature called Mitch's Minutia? Mitch's Epiphany. There's too many Mitch segments here. No, that's not it. So anyway, Tommy, mm-hmm. pull up a comment. All uh, right. Okay. So um, <clears throat> the one yeah. that I thought was really interesting, this comes from YouTube. And I've thought about this before, and I want to pose it to the two of you. Oh, uh, this comes from Cameraman Zoomit. And he says, as a Kiss fan who saw the like first. a porno star's name. But what? As a KISS fan who saw the first non-makeup tours, Lick It Up, Animalize, and Asylum, to me, it has always seemed weird when they do these songs in makeup, like Heaven and Fire or Lick It Up. Do you guys, do you guys um, think that too? Does it seem odd to you? And that wasn't his whole comment, but the, the gist of it. Um, Dave Cook, actually, is his name. Do you feel that way? I mean, because I always thought... It seems odd no. to me. I, I initially thought it would seem odd until um, when was the first time they did it? Was it? Um, I'm trying to think. There was one time I think in Phoenix in, in around '98 or something where they played forever, and I think that was sort of the first time they 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 got into the non makeup makeup stuff. No, I don't remember. I, I just have a distinct memory of the um, Millennium Show. Right. When up in Vancouver, which I was up at, and they they played "Heavens on Fire," that was that 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 moment. I was just like, "Wow, it actually is pretty cool. It's refreshing. It sounds yeah. great." It it up until then, yeah, it did feel like it could be a little awkward having a makeup band playing non makeup songs, especially Peter and Ace playing songs that they weren't on. But you know what? I just I just remember at that that Millennium show going, Heavens on Fire was freaking cool. It really yeah, I worked. Would, I, I would take it the opposite way. I, I think it was weirder to see them do a song like God of Thunder without the makeup in the 80s because that was such a theatrical moment in the show up until then with the blood spitting before and the green light. and So it was a little stranger maybe seen, but no. Nah. Uh, makeup or no makeup, uh, the songs are the songs, and so I have no problem. Plus, listen, if you've listened to our show over the last 50 episodes and all our set list discussions, I've often said they should play more 80s songs. So obviously I'm thinking they should play them in makeup. I mean, you know, I, I wouldn't mind seeing Hide Your Heart in full makeup, or in fact we just did on the cruise. And all. No. Yeah, it doesn't Perfectly bother fine me. With me. No, okay. and, in quite, and back to the Millennium thing. <laughs> I would have liked to see Peter and Ace try more of those songs because I thought it was freaking cool here. They did what? Uh, Heaven's on Fire. Didn't they do Lick It Up or yeah, something Yeah, they else? did Lick It Up, Heaven's on Fire, and one other tune. I know they tried forever once because I, you had posted it on, on uh, Kiss Online way back in the day. It was like live in Phoenix or something. Maybe Paul did it by himself, but I, I would love to have heard what those songs sounded like with the original four guys. I wanted more of it. I mean, yeah. they, they should have thrown in a lot more. And I still think the version of Heaven's on Fire and Lick It Up with Peter and Ace sound cool. Just like, you know, Parasite with Bruce and Eric sounds cool. Or just like, uh, whatever, Ladies in Waiting or Almost Human with Eric and Tommy. So I, I like it all, to be, be honest. Okay. But it's because so, of this do, you have another, do you have another comment? Uh you know, I was prepared for one, not for two. And so the I guess the other one, the, the common thread here is just all the people that, you know, wished you well with Thule. 
and um, happy that uh, everything's cool with thank, the baby yeah, and mom. Th- you know, thank you to everybody who's who's posting all that. It's it's very cool, and you know, I'm sure at some point in time, she's going to make an appearance either vocally behind the scenes, mm-hmm. <laughs> or there will be a moment where it's like. Uh, guys, I have to hold her while we're doing the show. <laughs> mm-hmm. Absolutely. And the reason we share this stuff with you is because we want you to know who we are as people as well. And yeah, that, it's all about you know, our well, personalities. We're learning yeah. Mitch is crazy and has issues. And, you know, I'm a new daddy. There you go. I have two very nice kids that I'm raising very nicely too. No, but I like the name Thule, by the way. And I, I, did I mention last week on air that it's a, it it's, was the name it, of a Canadian band? It was band? a Canadian band, yeah. Yeah, and they, they did a Motley Crue cover, and anyway, they're I know they're on iTunes Canada. I don't know about they've in got, the they states, got two, but they got two albums that are on Spotify. Do they? And I guess you can go to YouTube. But they were this fun female pop band from the two thousands, and I don't know. Go check them out. And if you're a, a Motley Crue fan, go check out their cover. Forget okay. what song it was, but good name. I like that name. Are you Norwegian? Yep. Is that where the name comes from? That's what the um, baby name app says <laughs> the baby name app said it's a Norwegian name. Now I had some, you... somebody posted on on <clears throat> Facebook that it was a Finnish name. Yeah, well, so, it's Scandinavian. It's, it's it's a Scandinavian. Yeah, name. it hmm. means uh, wind. wind. Oh well, there you go. And her oh. middle name is Aria, which means song. So her name is Wind Song. Oh, so and she's like wind plan, I Very poetic. Plan, I didn't plan that, but it's very cool. Yeah, absolutely. It's a very Native American sounding name. Wind song. Yeah. Song. Yeah. And, and, what are you and, and, and actually the, 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 the part that I love most is it's Tuli Aria Brandvold. Her initials are T A B, Tab. So I'm gonna start buying Tab merchandise for her. Perfect. And Tab Tab is pink. <laughs> She's a girl. There you go. Do they still sell Tab in the States? Oh yeah. 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 Yep. I don't think they sell Tab in Canada anymore. I don't I don't think I've seen a Tab. You're talking about the drink, right? Yep. Yeah. Yeah, it's still around. You know, I don't drink soft drinks, but I don't think I've seen that in a supermarket up here in 15 years, quite frankly. Didn't it just become it's, Diet Coke? You're, you're, you're in Canada. Well, it's regional, oh, yeah, we too. Have. You know, because like yeah. Milwaukee, you can get Quisp, you know, cereal. Quisp, Quisp yeah, a little Martian. Um, but you can't get that here in Minneapolis. Okay. Some places carry Frankenberry and Blueberry, and other places don't. I don't know. It just works out that way. Sounds great. All right. All right. So, so, so we uh, should we should we head into our special guest? Yes. Yeah. So, Roll it. so, so this special guest, um, we'll we'll let her do sort of the introductions, but we are joined by uh, Megan McCracken, and I'm sure everybody's going, who? Mm-hmm. You know, Wasn't I can, there a I can, McCracken I can hear the I can hear the crickets. People are just like, "What? Who's Megan McCracken?" I don't remember that name in history. If you don't know that name in history, you're not a real Kiss fan, right? If you claim to be an expert of history facts, you would know this name. You want minutia? We're bringing you minutia. We we are going for the minutia award. And, I think and, I taught you to a word, didn't I? I'm like your teacher. Minutia. It's a small word. I'm your Yoda. <sighs> Please, no. Uh, You're our Jar Jar Binks. <laughs> You're Jar Jar Binks, not Yoda. I ain't Jar Jar Binks. <laughs> yes, you are. <laughs> I'm too Please. thin to be Jar Jar. Tommy can be Jar Jar. I'll be Yoda. No, I can actually picture the droopy ears on you right now. Are we talking about Star Wars? Hey, Chris, you're, you're, you're great with uh, graphics. Turn turn Mitch into Jar Jar Binks. <laughs> Perfect. I'm Yoda. I'm Yoda. I've got the little bald head, little green ears. And... I bet this Jar Jar be, Binks this, this in will, a straight jacket. This is going to be posted on the ninth, or no, not the nineteenth. This is posted on the twenty uh, sixth. I bet by the end of November, Chris has sent us a photo of uh, Mitch turned into Jar Jar Binks. Yoda. You're probably right. Have you guys seen Mike Rutherford's comic strips that he's been posting? <laughs> They're awesome. <laughs> he's funny. Those are we've got, awesome. We, we've got so many cool listeners. Thank you guys, uh, by the way, too. Everyone that you know tunes in and adds to this, we love it. We, we're, Absolutely. We're, we're overwhelmed when we see that stuff. It's just so yeah, amazing. It's cool. God knows we had no 
intention of any of that type of stuff happening. But the fact that there's people turning little bits of our show into a comic strip is just funny. Fantastic. That Mitch is down there begging Gene, having lunch with Gene. Yeah, that was good, too. I enjoy those, but... uh... The, the, another one, and I don't think he puts it on on the three sides page. On my personal page, he uh, bought a Mitch T-shirt, Mitch Army T-shirt from that guy in Seattle, and he went to Portugal and he went to different landmarks in Portugal, taking pictures of himself in the Mitch, Mitch Army shirt. That was awesome, I, Sean. I believe that. I mean, that is awesome. Oh, and you know what? This is why I'm the Yoda. What I what oh, I yeah, think, Megan. What what I want to mention real quickly is. A couple shows ago, we did the Kiss Cruise set list, and we ta- I asked a question of how come we haven't seen any um, photos with Pictures. the band, and we, I, you know, are they doing them? Yeah. Well, listen, guys, we record shows like a week in advance, and the day after we recorded that show, the photos Boom. started popping up. So, I know. Oops. no, no, it's not not so much an oops. It's just. You know, somebody was like, oh, you know, you could go on the website and they would have told you they're doing that. It's like, I just asked a question based on an observation. So, mm-hmm. yeah, you know. they. You can't they, do that. Yeah, oh, yeah. No observation on the show. The show's got to be 100% factual. I'll tell you what. What they should do next year is get all three of us on the cruise to do the show, and then we wouldn't have these mix-ups. Yeah. Mitch is actually considering it next year. Yeah. I know. Well, you know. Yeah, they're not I think I probably us. should. They're not going to have us. It, it helps that I don't have to take four days off of work to go. I mean, I, you know, a couple of days you could probably swing, but Monday to Thursday, well, we can just take time like that off. We would but have, now if, if, we got if Mitch, all go, if Mitch three, goes, we'd have to schedule a Mitch LaFon meet and greet. Yeah. But think of the three sides of the coin episode we, we could a, have of all three we could talk about the, the smell party. and the food and the view oh it'd be wonderful. we could have a live mitch shockers with fans bringing stuff up to shock mitch you know like yeah, eddie, we, eddie, yeah. eddie, eddie, eddie trunk has stumped the trunk we look can it's have, a kiss we could, taser we could have fans bring up shock mitch yeah and nothing but spencer's items Ooh. <laughs> Mitch's chip pajama party. It'll be perfect. Hey, All right, so that's so anyway. So let, 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 let's, let's get move, to Megan. Yeah, that sounds move, like a paper Let's move into Megan. Mitch's let's pajamas move. party. Oh, shut up, Mitch. <laughs> <laughs> let's move oh, into oh. the the feature. We could all wear my pajamas. <laughs> we could mingle. Megan McCracken is our Please. guest. Everybody, um, we want to welcome a special guest to Three Sides of the Coin this week. We are joined by Megan McCracken. Now, I'm sure a lot of our viewers are kind of going, who is Megan? I don't remember her name in any anything related to history. And uh, we've the three of us have been given a little bit of insight, but Megan, if you could Kind of just give us the five minute as to where did you land in history? What, where, where were you in this this big world of Kiss? Well, I was um, actually living in the house with Sean Delaney and Bill O'Coin, whom we used to call Guy at the time, um, in the very beginning. And I am um, the girl in, I guess I'm that S and M girl in the pictures from 1975 in Cream and Circus and Circus Rays. So, so, so the the hotter than hell um, photo shoot that had the crazy party is that it? The one with um, that Finn Costello did, where it's a whole series of um, shots. With the spider where- webs. I start off, right, it ends up with the spider webs. I start off in this blue little satin thing as like this little child that they're ripping clothes off of and uh, progress into this wild S&M thing and into, um, I guess, this spider webbed vision of of terror or something. Well, so so, so <laughs> you, you said it, it was way back at the beginning. So are, are you talking 73 That's or even pre-Kiss? 70, 72, 71? 75, yeah, when 75. I shot that. Well, no, but when you started living, when you were living in the oh, house. Oh, thanks, Sean and, Sean and Bill. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure what year. I'm thinking it was probably 70, end of 73, 74. Um, not really good with my years, but... Uh, I was just out of high school. 
So, so how did you end up there? What led you to uh, that? Um, I Bill um, picked my brother and me up hitchhiking when we were, you know, when they it was back in seventy three. Everybody hitchhiked, and um, he was really cool. And he was driving a green Audi, and I knew the house that he lived in. It was beautiful. And um, it was built by this very famous um, designer woman that did a lot of sculptures and stuff. And she built it on her own property, um, actually for her daughter, but ended up renting it. And um, Sean and Bill moved in, and they were fascinating to me. I kind of had heard rumors about them. And um, so when he picked us up hitchhiking, I was really excited. I kind of knew who he was. And then he invited us to his house. And um, well, well, I may I ask you just. Who was he at the time? I mean, he wasn't related to Kiss, so so why the excitement? How? What do you mean you knew just, him? Was he just the neighbor? Saying, always, yes. My parents lived up the street. Okay. And it was a real. Um, it, 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 their houses were very far apart, so anybody new coming in on our road was like a big deal because the houses were like a quarter of a mile apart. So I I knew that was a cool house because I'd seen it being built. And I'd heard music coming from the house, which ultimately turned out to be Sean. He had this awesome area where he played piano. Um, it was like a keyhole-shaped room with the piano in the end, all glass. It was very um, forward-thinking design at the time for that house. Yeah. So, 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 so they 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 pick you up, and what? You were just sort of like, I need a place to crash, type of thing. No, <laughs> oh no, I ended up. Um, I was just starting off trying to do a little bit of modeling and I was taking the bus into the city and I knew they were driving into the city so I knocked on their door one morning and I asked if I could get rides um, into New York because it was about um, probably a 45 minute ride in a car and about an hour and a half on the bus so they were kind enough to give me rides into the city and I I'd sit in the back seat and just listen to them talk about this band and um, Sean and I got very bonded because on the days that I wasn't in the city, he kind of needed somebody to to hang out with. Sean was high energy, not really high maintenance, but you know how some people just are happy you're not alone? So mm -hmm. he and I became best friends, and I idolized him. Um, he, obviously, they were older than I and completely cool. So I just hung out with Sean on the days I wasn't in New York. And um, got completely corrupted by him. But I, also, <laughs> <laughs> I learned how to smoke cools. I learned how to do a bunch of bad stuff. Um, <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and sing harmonies. That was a good thing. He used to always, always, always writing songs. And um, he'd be like, okay, Megan, you got to sing it here. And, you know, I'm going to sing it here. And he'd do it with the hands. And he was writing songs all day long. He's the most prolific person I've ever and brilliant person I ever imagined I could know, and I'm um, very blessed. So was, was he, the writing, the music he was working on, was it stuff for Kiss, or was he working with other bands, or was it his own solo stuff? Just writing. I think uh, he, what he really wanted was to do a solo album. Um, that was his ultimate dream, and that was what he and Bill talked about him doing eventually. Um, no, he wasn't writing songs for Kiss. He was just writing. He was just one of those people that was so gifted that, like, he wrote all kinds of music, too. He'd, he'd be writing country songs for a little face, and then he'd be writing, like, jingles for a face. He was just amazing. All different um, kinds of music. And it was cool. He played guitar. He played piano. So, so you're, you're hanging out there. You're, you're writing with, with Sean. You're being corrupted <laughs> by Sean. Um, yeah. And I was also the housekeeper, too. They hired me to be the housekeeper. My okay. um, family situation um, was was a place that I, I didn't really want to hang out at the time. So I ended up kind of moving myself in with those guys. So at, at, at what point does, um, does KISS start coming into... The daily activities. Do you are they talking about this new band? Are they the are they time. working on songs? Is, is is the band is the band coming over there? Are there band was, meetings? No, the band wasn't coming to the house. We went to rehearsals. Um, well, in the city there was a loft, and um, and there were rehearsals going on there. It was in the very beginning. Um, I don't think I was around when they 
officially like signed. Um, Bill had a company called Rocksteady, I think it was called at first. Right. Um, yeah, and then and then it went on to be called other things. But um, but there were rehearsals going on, and there was a lot of conversation. Sean's again being super creative um, was always coming up with ideas and. I was always kind of listening off the back seat of the car or, or like a fly on the wall. But um, very, uh, I remember a lot the talk about what kind of makeup there was going to be and um, the very first shows and, and the use of the explosives and the choreography. Sean was always, always thinking about that and um, had good ideas. And I mean, the band was great. I got to see rehearsals. They, they were good without a doubt. Always. Um, what, so. what, what was was it a little shocking to you? I mean, what what were your 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 thoughts as as a as a kid, basically going, wow, there's this band that's going to be wearing makeup and breathing fire, and I mean, what well, what, 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 what was your thoughts of seeing that? There was happening? a lot that would shock me by that time because <laughs> well, I got to see it in its inception. So as it grew, it was kind of like just completely cool. Didn't shock me at all. Um, when I ended up doing that photo shoot, ultimately after that, do you want me to start talking yeah, about? Yeah, yeah. Give us, give us, give us some of the history of what yeah. led up to that photo shoot. Well, yeah, I was and, just... and, and, uh, so, go ahead, Mitch. If I can just interject, I also would like to know some of the conversations that Sean and Bill were having about the band. Like, what were they talking about? Did did, did they see the potential? Were they were they manipulating? Oh, sort of saying, yeah. we need to do this, we need to do that. That that's the kind of stuff. The, the I, mean, I, 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 I guess it, to, to follow up what Mitch is saying is I'm sure there were conversations between Bill and Sean back at the house right. that were different than conversations that were going on at rehearsals, sort of like the managers oh. coming back going, okay, this is what we want to do. This is where we want to take it. And then obviously they've got to figure out how to present it to a band. Right. Um, well, I do remember a lot of that. I remember a lot of the talk. I can't give you exact word for word conversations. Sure, but about no, but just the idea would be great. The changes in the makeup and the the wardrobe. There was a lot of conversation about trying to get enough money to pull this off. Um, and then was there the, a lot of panic about the money? No, uh, uh-uh. uh, Bill was pretty. We, positive. Okay, because we've read we've read over the years about Bill, you know, maxing out his American Express card yes. and. And, and we've read that you know it's, it's sort of become folklore now for the band. But he did, yeah. But, but was he very stressed about it? Was he like, oh my god, I, I could lose my house. I'm gonna lose. I mean, was it a no? Was it a, no. He was complete. I thought he, he was completely cool about it. I mean, we even still go out and eat steak dinners. He was relaxed for somebody that was out on the limb that much. I mean, the okay. cars and stuff. There were two cars, and they were not you know getting paid for, but. I, th- I feel like he felt confident. I mean, he didn't share any anxiety with me about it. That's for sure. Okay, so so he wasn't coming home and and, and throwing stuff against the wall, oh. saying, "Oh my God, I, I'm in a panic." And <laughs> Bill was really calm. He was a great businessman, and um, if he were feeling panic, you wouldn't know it. I mean, he was really a good businessman. To, to, to you, did it seem like he had just such complete faith in what was happening here that there wasn't even a doubt it was going to succeed? Yeah, that's what I think. I mean, I I don't think he had any doubt. I mean, he wasn't a risk. He wasn't the kind of a risk taker that would just go max out his American Express card and not make the car payments on something he didn't really, really believe in. Believe in. Yeah. You know, in in some of those conversations about the band that were in the house, was he ever saying uh, we need to change one of these members? This guy's not just right, or you know, as he was trying to craft the band into what was going to be successful, any talk of that, of yes, a drummer I wish, or, no? I wish I could remember exact things. I mean, I'll tell you one thing, there wasn't, I never picked up on a lot of um, talk about, is that with contention or any animosity between the band? It was a pretty cohesive group but, as far as I knew. Yeah, the personnel yeah, but, was good together. Um, my question is more in the sense, you know, when we talk about the Beatles uh, in, in the early days, we talk about Pete Best, the drummer, and there was conversations going on, Pete's not the right drummer, we need to change him. Were there any discussions at the house about, 
these members, maybe we need a different guitar or a different singer, or do you really think these are the four guys and that's it? I think I never heard anything like that okay. about somebody needing to be replaced. I'm not saying okay. that it might not have happened. That you know more than I then, because I didn't, I don't remember okay. hearing that. Let, no, let, me, I, let, I, let, let me ask you when 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 they're back at the house having these conversations, and I'm just trying to visualize how it's happening. You know, it, are you in the same room as they're talking, or do they try to keep you separate so you're not in the loop as to what's going on? Not at all. No, they didn't mind at all. We had a big table um, that was really a cool wooden long table and um, glass windows and an indoor big garden with trees in it. And we'd sit there and I made pot after pot of coffee and we, Sean and I smoked coals. I don't know how Bill even breathed around it but because he never smoked. And um, we'd sit there for hours just talking. Well, Sean and Bill were mostly talking about like getting the tours tours together and the shows and I was I mean I certainly didn't interject ideas I just kind of smoked cigarettes and drank coffee and listened. Right. So interesting. Yeah. Now now were, were at at that stage were you seeing things like sketches that were like design ideas comps you know were 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 there things being floated back and forth of well let's try you know like. Were, were there questions of, well, what should Paul Stanley's costume look like? What should, should you know, Paul Stanley's star versus the bandit makeup? You know, do we change the color of Ace Fraley's, you know, Oh, there were conversations. What, 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 yeah, I think that there was some conversation. Gosh, I wish I could remember better, because now sometimes rumor gets into my head from stuff I've heard also. Um, there was stuff about uh, Peter's uh, makeup getting, I guess, more cat-like. Um, and I think there was something about the star, but I don't remember. I couldn't tell you exactly what happened. Um, I remember the hair dyeing stuff. Um, Sean was big on everyone having black hair. Um, and the platform shoes, I remember conversations about that. And Sean would go, he was, um, he would go into the city, into the, um, I guess it's like downtown where all the S&M bars and stuff are. Right. And he could find all kinds of that, like whips and leather and chains and stuff at those. I think he used to go to a guy, what was the name of that place? The Pleasure Chest? It's probably still there. Um, but, and he hung out in these bars called the Spike and the Anvil. And, you know, he had so, that whole. So, was, was a lot of the, the leather costumes and the accessories and, and, and the platform shoes, was, was all that coming from Sean and Bill? saying to well, the band Sean, this is what we want you to do or or was the band already saying this is what we want to do and Sean and Bill are refining it you know I would have I the band had a lot of input and I would never take away that from them because I, I, I couldn't say who had what percentage of it um I know that Sean made it bigger okay he, he, he magnified and amplified yeah. what was happening sure. yes I would say that's a Real correct. Statement. I mean, there, there, there's a lot of people that have said Sean Delaney is sort of the fifth member of Kiss. Would you agree with that statement? Yeah, yeah. If there were one, yeah. I hope the guys would agree with that. I hope that they always remember him and give him credit for what he's done, what he yeah. did. Because he really did. He he was brilliant. He was like a ball of unbelievable light. Like nobody has Sean's energy at that time. His energy and creativity. I know as he got older, he changed a lot. But back in those days, he was just the most dynamic, incredible person. Well, well, well from what you've seen, what was Sean doing? How was he affecting the band? What, what were some of the, the the sort of the greatest ideas that you remember him coming up with? Well, I remember him, um, the choreography, um, when, you know, the back and forth with the, right. was that called Deuce or something? That, oh, with yeah, the one of the yeah. songs. And the, the pyrotechnics, yeah. yeah, the fire stuff and the explosions, and I, it's hard for me to remember if it was, you know, it's been a long time, and I don't want to say something that's not so, um, but I definitely remember him, he'd get right up on, at a rehearsal, he'd get right up in front of, up in front of somebody and just show them, like, how he sees it happening, and uh, yeah. It, it sounds like the way it sounds like the way you're describing Sean here is this was almost like a dream creative outlet for him that 
that all of a sudden he had the perfect band entity that he could let loose all of his creative energies and ideas on. And, oh, and, yeah. and nothing was being held back. And that it was going to, yeah, it was going to be huge. He actually, he went out on the road with them for a long time, too. Right. So he got a lot of the <laughs> really down and dirty reality of, of, you know, driving trucks and all that stuff, too. But, um, yeah, he was in it, for sure. Were, were there any things that you remember the, them discussing, coming up with ideas that they thought were great, but just didn't work out? Were there, were, did they try a whole bunch of things before they arrived at the swaying and at the makeup and at the costumes? Were there just a plethora of ideas out I mean, there? That like, did Sean ever say, you guys need to wear feathers in your hair? <laughs> Which, <laughs> yeah, of course, never happened, but was, was there interesting things like that? I think that there were some funny things. I wish I could recall them incidentally and tell you exactly what they were. But yeah, he would go off on too much of a of a like gay thing. Um, right. You know, they would be like, uh, I remember, you know, because sometimes he would just be out so outrageous with stuff. But um, gosh, it's been a long time, so I'm sorry for not having more clarity. Not not at all. And I'm sure the more you talk about this to people, I mean, because you were just at the, the Kiss Cruise pre-party as well, weren't you? Yeah. So yeah. I'm sure the well, more you meet a, fans and the more you get these questions, the more this stuff is going to start coming back to you. Right? Yeah, I think so. And I, I did an, uh, an interview for the new documentary as well um, with Alan Parker. So, right. um, But it was amazing that party because people were bringing me things to sign that I haven't even seen before. I mean, there's just so much that that from that one photo shoot with um, Dan Costello, I mean, people were bringing like records. Like I, I signed somebody's record that had me on it, like with the band I'd never seen that or knew about it. Um, and posters I hadn't seen. It, it's amazing. Did you, sign, did, you, did you sign anybody's uh, Kiss Coffin? I didn't get a coffin. Because Lynn, Lynn, Lynn Christopher was telling us about that. Yeah. Cause she was on the show a few weeks ago and she, she was like, I had this fan come up and had me sign up something. He goes, do you know what this is? And she's like, no. And he goes, it's a coffin. And he's got all these signatures of everybody and Kiss and related to Kiss. Right. I wonder if I did sign that. I don't know. <laughs> Stick right next to her. But people were just coming up and sign my jacket, sign my pass, sign this record. So I was like, but it was all good because it was for, um, it went to the charity for Sophie's, you know, charity. So, so. That's awesome. Yeah. So what was it a comfortable experience for you because you've never been in that before and here now you have all these people coming at you, you know. Well, yeah, it was fine for me. I, I, I have a past also after after I lived with Sean and Bill, but as as I grew up, um, they ended up managing my career as an, as an actor and I was on a soap opera for a while and a million commercials. So I was kind of used to the autograph situation. Okay. Um, and so it was fun and it was fine and the people were so so nice like they you know, just want to get their picture taken and it was fun it was flattering to um have all these people that are a lot younger than i generally um want to stand next to me and get their picture taken so that's very cool well let, let's go back to the to that photo session mm -hmm. and, yeah. and talk about you know how, how did that come about that you became part of of that photo session as, as the extra. Oh, okay. Um, well, they, I think, had another girl that was supposed to do it, and there we are at the coffee table in the morning having coffee and cigarettes, and all of a sudden, she canceled. So Sean just said, Megan will do it. So um, I didn't know what I was getting into, but as I had told you before, I'd just do anything Sean said. So we jumped in the car, we went into the city, to the studio, and uh, ran downstairs in... Um, it was somewhere way downtown, and we got all these little sleazy outfits and stuff. And Sean had brought things with him um, that he collected from, I guess, the pleasure chest. There were whips and chains and um, straps and and masks and stuff. That and he kept just putting things on me and um, telling me what to do. He was standing right off set, and he would just he was such a drama queen. He'd be like, "Megan, go like this," and I just copy him so none of that through that whole photo shoot if you guys have seen any of those pictures i mean i was like 18 years old like think like that but um yeah and we'll post it, some we'll post some of them here while we're doing yeah, this funny. i mean it's like wild stuff that um didn't come from me that was sean just 
making those faces and those body poses like he was just shouting it out and he, and, and, he and as that photo session was going on and and those poses and things started to develop did you start going wow this is a little shocking should i be doing this or were you like this is actually kind of cool. Let's go I was for trying it. so hard to be cool, you know. It was like 1973 that I, I I didn't really feel that. I've trusted Sean and Bill a lot. I know I wasn't going to get in trouble, and I already knew the guys. Um, I know, but you know, nothing bad was going to happen. So all, I was really thinking I didn't want my agents to find out that I was doing it because at the same time I was like the Burger yeah. King. So, <laughs> yeah. And I figured like, no one's going to recognize me. And they told me that it was for um, a billboard in Sweden. So I figured oh, it's never going to come to be that, you know, right. they're going to find Especially out. Right. And they, then, before the internet, right? Yeah, way. No one ever really found out about this until recently, um, probably in the last five years, reconnected me with that. Um, and Bill and I were working together. His last project, um, he worked. He he directed my fitness video that I did um, called Super Seniors, and that was right when he was he was sick. And, but we got to work together a lot. We actually dedicated the video to him in the end because he didn't make it to to the final end of it. So. You you mentioned that once in a while you'd hang out with the band, or the band would hang out at the house, or. What was your perception of, of the four guys when they would come over? And what would they do? Was it all just business meetings? Or would they get together and play some songs and try to work out album ideas? What was what was? No, it wasn't on? really. Usually it was totally social. Like I had to socialize a lot. Of okay. Meetings, parties and, and um, dinners and things like that. And we go to, I've been in all of their houses um, okay. on different occasions, which is like socially. But were you ever around for any other creative process when they were putting together the first or second album? Were you no. asked your opinion on song? No, okay. <laughs> well, I wish I could say that I was. No. <laughs> I told no, them no. Deuce was great. No, <laughs> so, so there was none of that. I was like, yay, you guys rock. <laughs> no, nobody would have listened to what, me what, anyway. Was it kind of interesting to, to see the two sides of the band? I mean, obviously when they're Kiss on stage, they're characters, and then right. you're hanging with them, just socializing. Really? Yeah. Was, was there sort of that 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 weird like, oh my god, this is not the Gene Simmons that's up on stage. This is a night, you know, this is a nice He's Jewish just, boy, as Tootie, yeah. Tootie Fields would say. Yeah, he uh, he. I mean, Gene's really really smart, um, yeah. and he, he kind of always retained a little bit of that character. I think. I mean, he used to tease me because I did get embarrassed a little bit easily. Um, you know, people said stuff to me, so he, he kind of shocked me once in a while by saying things, or he would call the house when he knew nobody was at the house, and then I'd answer the phone, and he'd be like, you know, making a phony phone call, or like breathing into the phone and stuff. Hard <laughs> 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 to believe Gene's making phone 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 prank phone Jeans. calls. That's right. He was the original crank yanker. Gene Simmons is on the phone going, is your refrigerator run? You better go get it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so but, um, the wives were great. Also, I have to say that um, Lydia and Jeanette, I mean, they were they were awesome to me always. And you know, I got to go out a lot of times to dinners with with everybody, and uh, those guys were great to me. Were you surprised by the ride that you saw take place, going from this infancy with Sean and and Bill talking about how they want to you know help this band to where they ended up? Did you? Oh. That was cool. I mean, I wouldn't say I was surprised because I, I, I got to see it step by step. So it's like, if you ask a fat person, are you surprised that you're fat? Like, they saw it as it came on, so it's not a surprise. You know, it's not a surprise. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but um, it was really, really cool, and it, I, I was happy for them. I mean, it, it grew so quickly. Um, O'Coin, you know, the O'Coin management turned into this, like, huge, they had a huge office and a press office, and there were mountains of fan mail all of a sudden in this room, and every day, just, like, things coming in, and then they got real big, fast. I mean, Gene was dating, like, Cher, and it was kind of crazy, like, how fast that happened over a short period of maybe, like, two years. Did you stay in touch with them as their success grew and they become became the international band that they've they've now become? Did you stay in contact with them through the seventies, no. eighties? 
Um, at, at the end of the set, well, in 1980, um, I actually lost touch with everyone because I um, became pregnant and had twins, and those guys didn't know what to do with me then. I was still being managed by a point management, and um, after I had two babies, it was like, <laughs> what are we going to do with her? But um, but I, I reconnected way later with with them. Um, in Florida, where he lived and where I do now live, yeah. Where, when but there was a chap. When's the last time you've seen the original four band members? Well, I saw Peter and, um, wait, who was at Bill's new, uh, Florida? It was, was it Peter and Ace, I guess, at Bill's Florida um, Memorial that we had down Right. There. I saw them, and I saw some of the guys from um, Stars uh, Piper, you know down here. Um, but no, I haven't seen um, Gina or Paul in a long time, other than on TV. Right. When you when you reconnected with Bill in Florida, did you ever have a chance to go through some of his collection? Like, did, did he did he have just a, just a mass, you know, a, did he amass great recordings and all kinds of video? Like, did, he, did you ever get a chance to see any of that stuff? Did he keep everything from 70s? Yeah, yeah. sorry. What I've heard from um, Roman, his his partner, um, until the end there, was that there is a lot of stuff, but it's at a relative's house, um, in in somebody's attic. I think it's not in there. They have a, a pretty small place down here, and it, it wasn't down here. I know um, Roman was putting some stuff at auction for charities and everything, but um, there was not a huge collection down in Florida. How did you end up reconnecting? Um, I just one time said to one of my daughters, my daughters are 33 years old now, um, that I, I missed Sean and Bill and wondered what happened to them. And she got on the computer. She's really good with that stuff. And she found, she told me that Sean um, died and, and uh, she found Bill for me. So I contacted him and he called me and we had lunch and we caught up and then we stayed really close, um, and then I, would, I had the idea to do this video, and I asked him about it. I, I respected his uh, opinion about projects a lot, um, right. and, and asked him about it, and if he would work with me, and he, he did. So it was great. It was fun, and it was funny um, because I grew up a lot since I had seen him and worked with him before. So it was kind of, we had times where we kind of, <laughs> I'd say no to him, which is something I never did. From before, hours. so yeah, so you had mentioned that that you had just you've just completed a fitness video. I mean, what what else are you doing now? You've said you've done some TV commercials and soap operas. Where else can Kiss fans find you? Well, um, I have the video, which is called Megan McCracken Super Seniors. So um, if anyone wants to buy things for any super seniors that they know, it is a really good workout. Um, it's available on Collage Video um, in their catalog and on Amazon and stuff. Um, but I did mostly just a ton of commercials and raised my kids for, for all the time until I moved to Florida about um, eight years ago. And now I'm a personal trainer. I have a, all private clients in, uh, in Jupiter, Florida. Are, your, are so your kids fans of KISS? Um, well, they love the whole idea. They know that I, that I am that person in those pictures, so they get a kick out of that. I think um, my daughter's in-laws might not love it so much. But um, <laughs> they, did, they, did they ever bring your photo to show and tell? <laughs> <laughs> By the time all this came out, um, where it could be talked about publicly, because also I, I was still doing commercials through the whole time my kids were in school, so it was kind of like we kept that under the... Uh, under the mattress there. <laughs> Under the mattress. Um, yeah. You mentioned that uh, around 1980 you got pregnant and you lost touch with Bill. Uh, from 78 to 79, Kiss's fortune started diminishing a little bit. They, the, the tours were getting a little less successful. Were, were you around for that time? And, and how yeah. was that Dynasty tour? I do remember, I do remember some, a, a little bit of stressful conversation at that time. I remember them debating heavily whether Kiss should um, do without makeup, you know. Was, as far back as 79? Yeah, they were talking about it, definitely. Really? When, when that was kind of in the works, yeah. They weren't going to do it, but it came up in conversation. Um, what was the purpose of, of that? Was it was it 
sort of off makeup even on stage or just show your faces to the media and what were they hoping it would do by taking off the makeup at that point? I don't know. It was just okay. I just remember one time walking into as we were walking into the house they were that's what they were talking about a little and bit. And they, they being talking. Sean, Sean and Bill? Sean and Bill. Yeah, Sean and Bill. Okay. Um, and then I remember I remember what there's some other stuff too that was going on because I do remember the, uh, that well, little well, death. At, at, at that point in time, also, you know, you've got Peter Chris departing the band. Were, were you were you hearing conversations of, you know, we've he, got we've got to fire Peter, you know, he's an issue. How do we replace him? What does this mean to the band? What year was it that Peter? Was Peter? I mean, Peter happened. finally left, I guess, after eighty eighty one. But he wasn't on the album, and it, yeah, he wasn't on the album in seventy nine. They had replaced him with Anton Fig, and so after oh, the movie, yeah. that's when sort of the tension, you know, the movie in seventy eight. There, there was this tension with, within the band. I mean, so the story yeah. goes, right? Yeah, I'll tell you what. I wasn't living in the house then, but I had moved out because I, I was actually working as an actor, and I was on a soap, and I was living on my own in New York, so. I okay. was into a lot of that conversation after like seven eight, probably seven eight. Um, I wasn't around that much. I'd bounce in and out of the office and go to right. you know, dinners and stuff with them, but I didn't hang out like I used to. Did you have any um, any communication with Bill when Kiss separated from Bill? Dropped him as management? No, I've heard stories about it. I, I, I didn't. Uh, there, I'll tell you, it was a really strange time, and I'm actually really thankful that I got pregnant in 1980 because people were just dropping dead like flies over that way. Um, way too many drugs, and and it was just getting um, ridiculously decadent. Well, it was just nuts then. So um, I guess <laughs> I got saved by becoming a mom. But now, um, now through all of the time that you were around this, what was your impression that? You've got Gene and Paul who didn't drink and do drugs. Right. Was, was that kind of an interesting... I didn't even really notice that they didn't do it. I mean, they, they would come out and um, they certainly weren't, you know, running to the bathroom every few minutes and coming out, like, glowing in the dark. <laughs> <laughs> like everybody else was then. It was just a crazy, crazy time. But um, I didn't really notice that they weren't. I mean, I definitely noticed that Ace was a train wreck all the time. It was comical. Um, and he was funny. He was fun. You know, it's definitely, I don't remember him being any kind of like a hostile drunk, but he was always like staggering. And between that and having those shoes on, not an easy business <laughs> to take a walk, you know? All right, so, so, so here, here's a, uh, a fun question. So when Lynn Christopher was on, she told us a little story about how Paul Stanley came over to her apartment one time and tried to put the moves on her. I heard that from her too. Did, well, well did, did never did it to me. And nobody in the band ever tried to uh, get with Megan? Isn't that pathetic? <laughs> 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 a lot of people, nobody did. I don't know. I think I was just like a somebody's little sister, you know? Was, was it perhaps because because you were associated with Bill? They were there was a respect there right. that don't touch the manager's girl. Well, whatever, right. not well, girlfriend, girl. but, but <laughs> sister household. or whatever you want to call it. But yeah, was there perhaps well, I, was a, an much off much I was a lot younger too, but I don't know if, if that was it or I don't know. It was just this skinny little kid, you know. Well, Megan, just, let me I, ask. Let me ask you this. I, I'd love for you to answer for every one of the four original members plus Sean as well as Bill. If I had to ask you, describe each one of them, how would you describe each person? Wow, you guys are tough. Um, <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sean, absolutely creative by your genius. Um, okay. Bill, incredible businessman and came across so level-headed even during his wilder days. I mean, he had an absolute wild side to him. I could tell you stories forever about that, but um, he came across really like a straight-laced businessman. Um, the guys in the band, I just remember um, Ace, as I said, just being like, hey, Curly, I remember going to the Trotters, the races with him, and he fell down the escalator stairs. And um, <laughs> I remember, <laughs> 
Jean, I remember walking around New York with, and even Jean in regular clothes is a monster. I mean, you know, he definitely is eye catching. He's so so tall with the shoes and the hair and the business. Um, and he he actually let me tag along with him a couple of times on little trips around New York and stuff. I remember shopping with him for um, one of his nephews for for Christmas or not Christmas, I guess Hanukkah, whatever, for a birthday. Um, at Bayo Schwartz, and that's when Jean had money, so we just got to run through the store just buying like everything a little boy could want. Um, and then uh, Peter and Lydia, I would just both see, I more remember Lydia because she was super nice to me. Um, Peter was, you know, was around kind of quiet, and Ace was, um, I don't know, he was kind of, I was in awe of Ace because I never really felt like he wanted to connect with me like I was kind of incidental to him I think and I Ace, just never Ace thought that. I mean Paul, I'm sorry Paul yeah right. Ace was yeah just Ace no Paulie yeah. um, I looked up to him and I thought he was awesome and handsome and all that but it never gave me the time of day Interesting. So, how, how about um, Jeanette Ace's wife oh yeah she's really nice she was very nice um, I do, I remember one time he came home and she almost shot him because she thought he was a burglar. <laughs> 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 that would have been horrible. Yeah, they had a house in Connecticut. Came like banging in the door. <laughs> she comes out, she was gonna shoot him. Yeah. <laughs> so, that wouldn't have been good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but now, there were some from, from the time you moved into the house till 79, 80, were you on the road? Did you go on on tours with them, or just a show that oh. happened to be in your town? Yeah, no, I only got to see them if the guys wanted to bring me. Like, I, I got to go to the um, Beacon Theater. I got to go to some of the beginning, you know, the shows in the beginning um, with them. Okay. Yeah, but I didn't know. Shirley didn't tour or anything like that. Okay, so you never went out for two weeks or anything like that. Just oh no, no, Sean did though. He'd come home with you know just lots of stories and receipts crumbled up in his pockets and Bill would get real mad at him because he never kept track of the money. He'd just like <laughs> have 900 wadded up receipts in his pockets and just slap them on the table. Bill was always trying to get him to, to keep some order, but some people just don't do that. Yeah. So, cool. Yeah. It was some good times. I wish I could give you better, more detailed stories. Oh, no, this is great. I mean, you know, you can only remember what you can remember. Yeah, I never cool. thought I'd be here doing this so it's uh, I, I still want to know about the the conversation about the no makeup I mean do you remember any other details as to Mitch, Mitch, Mitch loves the minutia I do <laughs> I wish I remember I remember it's funny because you know when you have a memory of exactly where you were standing we we're outside the front door of the house coming into the house and it was kind of being talked about but I didn't honestly pay that much attention to it I just remember that was being discussed um, album cover art, I remember, but I couldn't give you details. Um, but, you know, I remember conversations about that. Um, gosh. Were you around when they made the Kiss movie, The Phantom of the Park? Yeah, but uh, peripherally, I didn't pay much attention then. I was pretty much out of the house and doing my own things. But yeah, I remember um, also when they had the, I guess, the comic book with the blood, they decided to put the real right. blood into Yeah, I remember that. <laughs> So I'm interested in some of those conversations, if you remember them. For example, when they said, let's have solo albums, did they debate that at all? Did they say, eh, this is going to be a great idea, or did they say, eh, we'll slow yeah. No, there was some, there was some um, thoughts of that might not be a good idea at that time. I couldn't give you exact details, but I definitely know that, that there were conversations about that. Um, so when they when say it, it might not have been a good idea... Well, when they somebody, say it's not a good idea, was it Bill saying that, or was it the band saying to Bill, "Hey, Bill, we don't like your like who 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 didn't I think it was Sean a good idea"? Bill. It would have been between Sean and Bill talking about it. Um, Sean worked on it was Jeans, right? That Sean did, didn't it? Mm -hmm. Was it Jeans? Uh, he was working on. Yeah, I mean, and else with too, um, but no, nah, I can't give you details that would be real authentic. I mean, I could make stuff up, but I, I don't think that's a good idea. No, no but I, I do find it interesting that before they actually became, or before they actually were released, that they were saying, maybe this is not a good idea. And I do think it's interesting that, you know, the band took off the makeup in 83, 
And here they are as far back as 78, 79 saying, we need to shock the people and take it off. It's, you know, it's, it sort of changes our concept of what the band was doing marketing wise going back four years earlier than this. You know, no, I know. You know, Mitch, I, I, I would sort of sit there and look at it from this standpoint. If you're a manager, Mm -hmm. You're looking at all possible contingencies. You're looking at all possible options. So, so taking the makeup off and discussing it doesn't necessarily mean it would happen. It's just no, let's true. let's let's start discussing it and what could that mean? And because you don't yeah, you, yeah. you you don't know if in eighteen months it's got to happen or what. You just you're always looking at what are the other options out there for your. Yeah for your band, for your, your clients, right. so you but as my, the manager my, are on top of everything. Right, Just, but my point is more in the sense that when you start having contingency plans, those are in case of failure, and of course in 76, 77, as the band's on this rise, there was no way that that conversation was happening. So they could sense, I guess, as far back as 78, 79, the wheels were falling off and we need a plan B. That's sort of where I'm going sure. with that. Or it could also be like when you draft a quarterback, you know, you're looking five years into the future of your of your team. So maybe it's just one of many conversations they had about that and Kiss World and God knows what else. So yeah. they may not. It was, was, it was called Unmasked, right? Yeah. Was it? Right. So I even remember that name tossed out way back then, Unmasked. Like that would be just Sean just throwing out ideas. Like... It doesn't mean that it's imminent or anything. He's just like no. banging out ideas, and I do, I definitely remember because I'm not I I don't have any kiss albums. But I think they're great guys and everything, but no. I just, but I, I mean, when you look at different artists, whether yeah, it's the Beatles or Cher or Britney Spears or Kiss, when their careers start slowing down, that's when they start thinking of these other plans. So it's just interesting to me that as far as seventy eight, seventy nine, they could see. We've got to have another game plan because, as it is now, it's not going to go forward this way. So that's that's what I find interesting. It, Ma Megan. Here's a here's a question. So if you were to compare and contrast Sean and Bill, is, was one of them more adventurous, more of the risk taker, more I'm willing to try something just off the wall, and the other person was a little more reserved, a little more conventional a little more well we really got to think about this bill is way more conventional and realistic and he put the kibosh on a lot of sean's ideas sean was like oh my goodness he was always thinking of like crazy stuff and he would pick up the phone and just like start dialing he call a million people a day and just throwing out ideas and putting plans together and bill was always having to rein sean in on do, his do you stuff. think that was a because to me, that sounds like that would be a good balance. Did it was was that, was was that what you saw there? Is here you've got this guy who's free to throw out every idea in the world, and he's not insulted when Bill says no to nine out of ten of them, but that one that works is huge. Yeah, no, they were a perfect combination, and they were hilarious because like Bill was almost like not like our dad, but like <laughs> if Bill was out of town and he was coming back, Sean would have made the biggest mess on the planet in the house, like horrible. And he'd be like, Bill's key, he, we call them geek, like, he's coming home, we gotta clean this up. And we would just like, scream, like, it was like, oh my God, dad's coming home, <laughs> we gotta clean. <laughs> we just like scramble around, and, oh my God, he's coming home. Like, Cause he'd come in and he was very proper and things had to be perfectly in place. He didn't smoke cigarettes, but he loved Sean and his brilliant genius and Bill, Bill pretty much saved Sean. He, he, I don't know if you know that story. It's another whole big thing. But when Sean came to be in Bill's life, it was because they had met in a bar. And then Sean was living with somebody else who really crap out of him, put him in a coma. And um, Bill got him out of the hospital and saved him, saved him completely. Sean's eyes were pulled out of his head by someone. Um, that was a long, long time ago. And they stayed together for like 17 years. I mean, they were, they were together. Now, as, wow. as, as Kiss's star is rising, you know, during the, the early mid-70s, and obviously everyone is going, wow, Bill Coin is the manager here. Were there a lot of other bands? Now, we know of Stars and Piper and stuff like that, but were there other bands that were knocking on the door going, Bill, we want you to take over managing us? I mean, were there names where you were like, holy cow, this band wants Bill Coin to manage them? 
Oh, nobody that ultimately that that got like super famous that they turned out. Not that I know. I mean, um, he had Billy Idol. A lot of actors too were coming to him. I mean, he was a pretty big management group at one time. Um, okay. What do you What do you so. remember? What do you any memories of uh, Van Halen when when Gene discovered them, produced the demos, wanted Bill to manage okay. them? Oh yeah. Wait, I do, but not enough that I can give you detail. But I do remember that being yeah talked around. Again, I was pretty pretty well out of the house by then, so I was kind of in and out of the office on my own business. In the in those early years, seventy four, seventy five, and all that, uh, would you say that Kiss was really Bill's only focus? I mean, he wasn't yeah. looking for other Absolutely. bands and other TV shows. He was just focused on Kiss. It was yeah. do or die, basically. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it was everything. I mean, even when I had little modeling jobs, like we would run into the city and get my checks to like get some more lights or get like it was just really scrimping and, and trying to grab as much money as as uh, possible. Did he ever talk to you about what he saw in the band? Like, why did he have so much confidence? Why did he put all the eggs in one basket? No, he never talked to me about it. It was just no? that was his belief. That was what was going to happen. Um, you know, he had a partner. Um, Joyce, right? I, was Joyce, yeah, Joyce was in there, uh, 70. Joyce and Neil, when did they come? Joyce, uh, 74. Yeah, 74. 74. Yeah. Uh, um, it is remarkable, though, that, that you would put all your faith and all, all this money. I mean, we're talking huge amounts back in the day on one yeah. band. Sometimes you want to bet on two or three separate horses so that you make sure one of them wins the race and, uh, well, stars came in shortly, yeah, shortly after came stars, and um, and they had a country band too. Remember Toby Bo? Not at all. <laughs> yeah, they brought in a country band that had one big hit, "My Angel Baby," um, and a pretty good country album. And that, yeah, Bill managed them. Check it out, Toby Bo, B T O B Y B B U from Texas. Okay. Yeah, yeah, they went into a little country thing for a while. Hmm, so, interesting. Yeah. Oh, I learned something in history. I didn't know Bill Man is a country band. And, there you and, go. And, and that makes it all worthwhile to Mitch. He just learned. I something feel richer. A new shot. Megan, I, I know. Um, uh, before we got started here, you had to be out by a certain time. Do we need? I have a client coming shortly. Okay, so, so, so we should probably wrap this up so you can get prepared for yeah. your client. Um, is there a website that, um, that you want to direct people to? Facebook page, anything like that? If you want to go to my Super Seniors page, it's www.mysuperseniors.com. Um, and then if you Google my name, you'll see like Megan. If you go Megan McCracken commercials, there's like YouTube, a bunch of YouTube stuff. If anyone wants to see old yeah. Megan McCracken commercials, and, and, like and, and, <laughs> obviously you're not afraid to uh, hear from Kiss fans. So no, not at all. On my Facebook, Megan McCracken. Yeah. Okay. And I have. Lots of kiss, like people from that are kiss fans that have already found me, and, and yeah, can always find me on Facebook. Great, excellent. Kiss excellent. fans are great. Well, guys, any oh. final parting questions? No, no this, this has been great. Guys. Very informational. We just appreciate you taking the time, Megan. I wish I had more details for you guys. It's, as I said, been a little bit of time gone by since then. Well, you know, as the as, the, as the memory family. clear as the memory clears up over time here, maybe we'll have you come back and you can fill in some of those interesting stories, especially about the taking the makeup off, which Mitch will love to hear. Sorry, go ahead. No, listen. When Kiss took it off in '83, Bill was no longer their management. So I'm just sure it was interesting to know that Bill had suggested that. It was definitely talked about. I completely do remember that. Yeah. Awesome. Well, Megan, thanks so much. Thank you. Thank you. It was it was, it was a pleasure chat with you. And I'll take notes anytime I think of anything. So when you find me next, I should have more. Awesome. Thank awesome. you so much. Thank you. Well, thank you. <laughs> Bye, Megan. So have a good one. Oh. There was a lot of, I wouldn't say a lot of minutia, but there was some fun minutia in that uh, that discussion with Megan. Absolutely. Well, yeah. Mitch part got, of it's just she's living it. You she's know, she was it. there. She was there. I mean, to me, that was the cool part is here's somebody who was living in the midst of this. You're living with Sean and Bill at the birth of Kiss. Yeah, that was pretty cool. freaking cool. And it wasn't like she was living with them for just a week. 
She was living up a few years through all of that stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Imagine the fly on the wall stuff that she heard that as she starts thinking about it now, she's going to start remembering some of the stuff. Mitch's head would explode with the stuff she's going to remember. I I still... I still find it interesting that Bill O'Coin and Sean were talking about taking off the makeup because after that it was Glickman and Mark. I mean, I, I thought that, that they came up with that when, you know, they were bailing water on the sinking ship and uh, it was thought of before. Because they always said, wasn't, isn't the story that Paul came up with the idea? Isn't that sort of the official line we've been fed over the years? That well, it was Paul who wanted sure, to do this? But, but maybe it was Paul who pulled the trigger on it i'm not i i'm not believing that the discussion that bill had back in 78 79 was the beginning of let's remove the makeup i think it no, literally I, was just a hey hey sean you know we're sensing some turmoil here peter's gonna be we got to get rid of peter the solo album thing is interesting the fan of the opera this band is imploding things are not going up we're starting to do this what can we do to revitalize the band oh well we could always take the makeup off well and it might not it might have even been before that maybe it was just a hypothetical just like you would with what anything else and what it could could they survive without makeup could we have hit records could we you know if the makeup was gone would they somehow have you know more radio air but who knows yeah, why yeah, I, mean, I, I sort of just envisioned it as that type of a discussion and yeah. I mean, let's, let, let, let's be honest. The band wears makeup from 1973 on. You can't tell me that at any point through all of that, people didn't at least think, well, you know, we could always take the makeup off. It's always, Perhaps, an, it's always an option to take the makeup off, and now you've got a whole nother level of excitement. I just think it was probably Paul around the Creatures of the Night era that said, we're taking it off. Yeah, no, right. it's just... It's just interesting that it goes back that far with a different management group. I mean, you know, after after Glickman and, Glickman and Marx got into it, and and you know, this is pre MTV, where pre internet, where the impact of them taking it off and then posing for Teen Beat or Sixteen might not have been as impactful as the MTV unveiling. Um, and you know, Bill was so. Uh, conscious about having them do radio interviews and magazines and never show their face that they that they would even consider taking it off even as a plan b or a plan c is intriguing i just i just look at it as listen if you are a real sharp manager you're all oh i get that you're, you're always looking at what other options exist to propel your client for another year to another level and oh, yeah, I, no, no, and, I get and, that. And I and I think, you know, by that time, listen, after after the few years of nobody can see Kiss without their makeup and all the photography, somebody's going, wow, if we did the big reveal, that it would be a oh, bigger yeah, no, no, event. I, I, I fully understand that. I, I just, and I, uh, and I, you I just know, expected. Well, listen, do you think if Kiss took the makeup off in 79 – would it have been more impactful than when they did it in 83? Wow, that's a good question. Yes I and no. Th- Let me, no. Uh, yes and no. Yes, because you would have had Ace and Peter, but no, because you might not have had the same media exposure. On MTV, with people watching live, there's a big bang, but there's also that anticlimactic cl- climatic moment of, oh, there's Vinnie Vincent's face. And that's not a knock on Vinnie, but people w- would have been more excited had it been Ace. Um, a bit of both, you know, to to take off the makeup and then do like a People magazine shoot, and then that comes out three months later. But you know, but, but, but who who says they couldn't have taken the makeup off and done twenty twenty or sixty minutes? Or yeah, okay, yeah. Well, I, don't know I think the bigger thing is, is that they were on a, they were on a collision course to the elder, and part of the thing I think that helped the makeup the removing of the makeup work for them even beyond MTV was the idea that they had already now put out a new record that had a solid single that was receiving a lot of airplay because think of it this way if they would have put out another album like The Elder or something that didn't get the fan base back the it's very possible that removing the makeup at that point nobody would have done them would have gone yeah, it, 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 it could have really come tough. and gone 
I kind of think if they did it in 79, it would have been more impactful. I'm not talking about the way media could have helped it, only because at 79, mm -hmm. even though they were coming down from their peak, they were still peaking. They were still pretty big in 79. Yeah. A, a, lot of, a lot of fans' first show was the Dynasty. You look at me or Sebastian Bach or some of these other people who have talked about it, Brian Tishy and all. It was all in 79 where we all went and, for the and, first and, time. So, and as you said, it was the original four. So they were still somewhat at their height in 79. You had the original yeah. four. It's still much closer to major success that Kiss has been having. It's much closer Agreed. to the hiding our faces. So Agreed. all of a sudden it becomes a big reveal. 83, they've already, boom. You know, and I think you, they you, already. You, you, you'd gotten Unmasked. You'd gotten Elder. You'd gotten Creatures of the Night. Down, 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 down. You no longer had the original four members. As cool as it was, I still sort of feel like the MTV unveiling was just sort of a anticlimactic. Like, oh, it's well, very yeah, cool. That's... It's very cool for me as a fan, but it didn't feel like a massive event. Well, I don't know. I mean, I think it was perfect timing for them because I think if I was in their shoes, I would think, okay, someday we will, we're going to do this, but it's your last card to play. And so you have to – it's like an express pass on right. um, an amazing race. You use it when you're so desperate that you have to get to the end. Right. And that's what this is. And so, yes, it would have been more impactful to take it off in 1980. But at the same time, it could have maybe not taken them as far as it did no, into you're, you're the right. 80s. Well, well, you see, that's the thing. After Peter leaves and Ace leaves and you've got Eric Carr that comes in, you've got a guy coming in with no makeup. Would that have changed the whole, you know, I don't know if people would have cared about Eric had he not been the Fox. And, and, and it's tough to say. But it, it's an interesting. It's interesting to know that the Bill O'Coin management team thought of that. I always thought that it was an act. I, I always thought that Bill was. It's all makeup all the time. There's no interviews. There's nothing without makeup. So that that even crossed their mind to me is interesting. Well, yeah, but you know, he may never have. Sh she never said that he actually shared it with the band. That might have just been a discussion well, between him and Sean, and he sees the writing on the wall because he's not in the middle of it. And, but it may never have been discussed with them at all, yep. you know. That's true. You just That's don't true. know. Yep. So, guys, homework. So maybe Gene and Paul no, learned what about, something today. What about his, huh? Maybe Gene and Paul learned something today. Maybe they're going, maybe. what? Bill was talking about us taking off the makeup? <laughs> oh, yeah. How homework, is this possible? Homework, guys. Any homework ideas? We're not, uh, but what about shockers? We're not doing that then today? Oh, God. I feel like we had so many shockers when Mitch went ballistic. I'm overdosed. Yeah, All right, but you Mitch. Wanna... Focus in and out right. real quick. All right, I got, I, got, I got something on the floor, but uh, uh, I'm going to do one that you asked for. You said to me. No, wait, wait, wait. Now give me some silence here because people hate it when you talk over the music. Okay, Shaka. Well, we're gonna we're gonna build. Well, actually, we're not gonna build that much. But. In and out, All right. In and you out. you asked me for the uh, the uh, the Archie. I do have it. See, hardcover, not Hard from cover. Spencer. Yeah, look at that. It's all put together nicely, Did you read it? isn't it? I don't read. Why would I want to read? That's true. You don't like words. <laughs> Freaking reading. Mitch is and, a journalist uh, who hates words. No, I hate reading other people's words. Um, and uh, this one I showed up today, so I'm just going to show it real quick. But look, Ace Fraley remastered. Mm. Okay. And then uh, not a big shocker, but, but a bit of a rare item. I thought we were doing one shocker show. I didn't know uh, Spencer's carried CDs now. <laughs> all right. Look at this. This <laughs> is um, this is a good one. This that, is, is that the like, laser disc? Yeah, it's Kiss Phantom of the Opera. On uh, wonderful, oh, hold on. Laser Phantom disc. of the Park. Isn't that Phantom of the Park? It's Phantom Fan of the Park. What did I? What did I say it was? Phantom of the Opera. Oh, you and well, your that musicals. Yeah, look, Phantom of the Park on laser disc, and uh, this is a, a unique a, that's, one. That's a, that's a that's a rarity. That's actually really yeah. good, Mitch. 
I have uh, I have all of them on a laser disc. Kiss Exposed. I'll, I'll show them at another time. Do you have but, a laser uh, disc? I did back in the day. I don't I don't have one anymore. So these just sit here and collect dust. I I, I, I do have three laser discs as laser disc um, shows as well. I don't have the player, but you can you can get lucky and pick them up pretty cheap at used used CD yeah. and video stores. Believe it or not, I even have the Kiss MTV unplugged on Laserdisc. I don't believe it. I do. Well, I'll show it to you next week. So I don't want to run out, but uh, yeah. And uh, listen, if anybody wants to buy this, it's it's in a nice, uh, you know. Oh, so you actually selling? I'll sell everything. I'm I'm. It's a fire sale on the locker. You want my you locker? You need to do a Spencer's garage sale. I do a locker sale. What if they Step want to buy the, the letter? Will you sell the letter? No. Will you sell the letter? No. Will you sell your on-tour board game with whatever surprises are in it? Except the letters. Yes. Even the Area 51 information? Who shot JFK? Yes. Where okay. Jimmy Hoffa's yes. buried? Yeah, it's, it's somewhere in Michigan. It's horrible. Uh, but yeah. But you've got that information stored in your on-tour game, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, and the pictures of the aliens in Area 51, yeah. yeah. Okay. And there's oh, a picture like a of Mrs. Box. Mitch in there. We'll find that's how you'll see Mrs. Mitch. That's yeah. how it keeps the pictures. Actually, you can see Mrs. Mitch on my Facebook, but no, it doesn't yeah. All right. She's gotta come on the show. So let's, let's, uh, wrap, let's wrap, well, the, let's wrap you know this what? up, guys. I gotta say, if you want her on the show, we cannot record on Tuesdays because she works from two to ten on Tuesdays. Mitch is ignoring. How convenient. It's be a Wednesday. So homework? Very convenient. She'd divorce me if she knew I was doing this. Home what? Homework. Oh, homework. Hmm. Anything interesting. from Megan that's homework related? Or do we? Or All do right. we do? Do we do homework as in? What do you think if Kiss on Mast in '79 would it have been more effective? Yes, that's yeah, good. Yeah, there I, I want to go with that. I like it. And also, what they think of of Bill and Sean discussing that possibility. So if, okay. if Kiss unmasked in 79 rather than 1983, would it have been more impactful? And why? Yeah, there's always a why. Professor I don't like Tommy when they just type yes. going to grade these. Oh, and before I forget. Tommy hasn't been grading a lot lately. Uh, we've, 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 we've skipped over our voicemails for a couple weeks here just because I've been slammed with a baby. But please call and leave your messages. 1-320-515-4771. 1-320-515-4771. Leave your comments, your opinions, your critiques. Let us know what you think of Mitch. Look, I'm unwrapping. Go ahead. Oh, keep, keep talking. Ooh. Leave your voicemail messages. And we'll get, we're definitely going to get back to my I promise. Yep. I promise. So, guys, until next Thank week. Thank you. I'll see you guys next week. Later. Cheers. Bye.